Hey, Sting for Tom Morgan. Hi, this is Sting for Tom Morgan. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm just going to keep that forever. Saturday night, awesome wrestling entertainment at Waynesboro High School. You're going to be coming into our territory. You know, I hear a lot of country stars and they talk about headlining stadium shows. Kenny Chesney more specifically. And then he's like, you know, I kind of prefer the smaller bar scene and that sort of thing. You could easily headline WrestleMania this year if you really wanted to. Do you like touring at the, at the smaller places now? Yes, I do. And I'm glad to do it because I get to see some of my old buddies, some of my old yeah. running buddies, especially somebody like Lex Luger, you know. Of course. Uh, he's, in Buff- he's in Buffalo now, and I'm in the Dallas area, so it's good to be able to connect with all these guys when you see them at these shows. Now, you got a big break at the first ever Clash of the Champions when you wrestled Ric Flair. 45 minutes, right? Is that how long that match was? 45 minutes, yes. No commercial and it, was, uh, it, it, it was commercial free. The first time any any sporting event of any kind on television had ever gone that long commercial free. Well, I like to think of this match kind of like Rocky. The match ended in a draw. Flair got to keep the title. Yeah, no, that that that's the very match that that put me on the map, really. And and you know, I I, I credit Ric Flair to this day, and thank him for it because you know that night he had the ability to make or break me set the pace for a good 20, almost 30 years after. When we talked to Ric Flair a few months back, I brought up that match, and I think he started crying, but I don't think it takes a lot for him to cry these days. So. He's very emotional these days. I've, <laughs> I've seen him quite a few times this year, and I, he's a great guy, though. I Absolutely. Love, love Rick, you know. Sting on Morgan in the morning. He's going to be at AWE Waynesboro High School this Saturday. Let's talk about the NWO in the 90s. You know we got to go there. It was an awesome time in wrestling. They started at Bash at the Beach where Hogan turned into a bad guy, shocked the world, and all this trash was being thrown in the ring. And here's another question. This might be one of those, no, that's the first time I've heard this one. I heard a rumor that you were originally supposed to be the leader of the NWO. Well, that's such a common question, and okay. and I honestly, that there are things that I have forgotten, and then, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> but I do not, I do not remember ever, you know, being put in that position gotcha. ahead of the NWO, uh, especially in those days, you know, right. you still, it was just right there on the hairy head. Wrestling was changing; it was turning from the you know, black and white babyface heel to the more you know, almost gray. Everything was beginning to turn gray and, and, and I was still that white meat kind of, you know, baby face poster boy for for uh, WCW. Mm-hmm. So I just I do not remember that. <laughs> you were this mysterious vigilante, I know you remember that, hanging up way oh, up in the rafters. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you did that, honestly. My sphincter was tight every single time I did it, I promise you. Oh, my gosh. My sphincter muscle. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, it was, uh, I could tell you stories, and, and uh, you know, unfortunately, the the tragedy that happened with right. Owen, you know, I some of the stories I I probably shouldn't shouldn't tell. Sure. But, I mean, if, if, if people knew what was going on up there. Yeah. On a handful of occasions, uh, oh my gosh! I mean, you know, I put it this way: I, I was close, close to having a, a, a fatal accident one night. Mm. Uh, Chicago at the UIC Pavilion, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that that was a uh, wow. I mean, I'm I'm sweating right now telling you the story, and uh, and then you know coming out of a helicopter and you got a Vietnam. A uh, vet who's a who's a pilot who says, you know, staying by uh, to some chance uh, your rope or your your cord gets caught up in my blades, I'm gonna have to cut you loose. You know? Oh my gosh! And I'm, you know, and I kind of chuckle a little bit, and right. and he's looking at me with these cold eyes. I'm like, okay, you're not joking, are you? <laughs> no way. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, if, if it gets caught in the blade, where we're both going down. But you know, right. I guess he had a he knew that if he cut me loose somehow, he'd at least save himself. Oh man! So you know, I step out of this the edge of the helicopter, and, and the helicopter swinging back and forth because of my weight. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that that's a weird feeling as well as you're hovering over the water, sure, in Florida, and making your way over to you know the ring. And you had to so. have that same look on your face the whole time. 
stone cold look about you that <laughs> really just gravitated toward me loving you as a wrestler because you were my favorite wrestler of all time. And you did that for a whole year. You didn't say anything at all. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you wrestle at all during that time period or were they just building your character? There, there was just a build of the character the whole way through. I mean, yeah. I was physically involved just sure. about every single night, but not actual wrestling, wrestling. Yeah. matches. No, I didn't wrestle until that Starcade match against right. Hogan. Yeah, and I bet what, did it feel great to be back in the ring once you finally got to do that? Heck yeah, man. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Now, let's talk about the present. You know we're seeing guys like The Undertaker wrestle more and more. Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement. I know you get this question so many times. And I know that you had a very bad injury a few years back. I know that. But do you think, I know you want one more match. That's one thing. But do you think you have one more match left in you? Do you think WWE will allow that? Do you think the doctors will allow you to have that? Yeah, okay. That's the key to the question right there at the very end of it. The doctors, you yeah. know, and, and I have not pursued that. Okay. Uh, but, yes, I I I still would like that to happen and, and – uh, um, always wanted it to, uh, but it, I would only consider one against one opponent, and that would, that would be Taker, and, right. and that's it. Uh, you know, any any anyone else, I just uh, at this point, why? <laughs> you sure. know, um, but I, I have always loved the idea of of uh, Sting Taker thing, and you know, well, we I have so many so many ideas in my head on you know how to make it just a night that people would never forget. <laughs> yeah. And I've had some of these ideas for decades, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh well, what do you think about like as a general manager for Raw or SmackDown? Do you think that's a possibility with your schedule? It's a possibility, but I'm wouldn't I wouldn't consider it. It's just something that you know, I, I, I guess for a time because I was asked so much, I thought, well, you know, maybe, but you know, I just it's just never been in my blood to to walk down that road and then to play that part. And I think it would you know, I'm, I'm leaving what I'm leaving behind intact the way it is now. And I think if I were to attempt, you know, some sort of manager or general manager type position, that would just kind of, I don't know, would just kind of tarnish it in a way. Sure. You know, I'd, I'd rather people remember remember what they remember and not not the general manager guy. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I know this may be a long story, and if it, if it's too long, I was going to ask you a, a good road story, but you have so many of them. Um, is there one road story in particular that you uh, could share that was one of your favorites? <laughs> so He's many of them. Most of them, I, I can't even tell. But nothing to man, do with Ric Flair and his bridges, you know, with, please. With the Steiner brothers, the Steiner brothers were, were were both crazy. You know the way oh, they yeah. they drove, and I was in the cockpit of the car with both those guys. You know, for such a long, so many years, and. You know, we'd we'd have these these wars as we traveled from town to town, and sometimes you know from state to state in a car. And uh, boy, we we'd have you know wars, water balloons, throwing stuff out, you know, back and forth at each other, and wars down the road. And you know, Rick Steiner, Scotty'd be driving down the road. We'd be going you know seventy five, eighty miles an hour down the interstate on our way to wherever we're going, and see up ahead of us. Kevin Nash, um, uh, Tony, I forget Tony's last name. He was a ring announcer at the time. Mm -hmm. And in, in a van, you know, with about, oh, six guys in this van. <laughs> and, and, and we'd come up 75, 85 miles an hour, Scotty, right next to them on the driver's side. And Rick sticks out his head and opens up the car door <laughs> on the passenger <laughs> side. Um, uh, you know, and these these guys are screaming, and you know, at night uh, on another trip, we're bumping them from behind, and you can see Kevin Nash and and Rick Rude kind of ducking down low because they don't know who it is. They think it's you know somebody with guns or whatever. And yeah. it, I can remember being at the uh, Mall of America in Minneapolis with again Rick Steiner driving, Lex Luger's in the car, Tom Zink, Brian Pillman. I mean, these mm -hmm. are names. Yeah. Um, Scotty Steiner. There were about six or seven of, of us in this in this van, and it was frozen, cold. Uh, it was at night after the show. We had gone out to grab some dinner, and, and Rick Steiner goes through Mall of America parking lot, which is like you know just football fields of of just nothing but pavement. And he put he stops, he puts the van in reverse, and he he floors it as hard as he can. 
and Lex is freaking out, and, and Rick turns the steering wheel 360 degrees, and we start doing spins. We start spinning around. Oh, my gosh. And Lex, Lex is freaking out. That's not funny. It's not funny. Let me out. Let me out. You know, and of course, we're, we're not going to let him out. Right. And, and you know, we got up to two. We got up to three, four. We got up to eight eight revolutions. <laughs> Lex was green and wanting to puke. But, oh, man, there were so many times, so sure. many good stories.